Welcome, welcome. Welcome everyone to the St. Ignatius College Prep Virtual College Fair. We have a great lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. But before I turn it over to them, I do have some housekeeping items for you all. First, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening. Um, we also hope this is a really fun format for you all. You're going to hear from um, six colleges in six minutes, and I hope that you enjoyed the format. So sign up for more sessions because there's a whole hour after this with more institutions that you can hear from. This is also being recorded and everything tonight will be recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Ignatius within one week. Um, you, we know that you're gonna have some questions. Our panelists wanna make sure that your questions get answered. So feel free at any point to put your question in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Type out your question, but also note the college or university that you're directing your question to so that they can answer appropriately. Finally, this is a six by six format, which means that our colleges only have six short minutes to share great information with you um, about their college or institution. So we hope it's just enough that you'll wanna do some more research on your own. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to our first presenter. I'd like to introduce to you Bennington University. Take it away, Wesley, whenever you're ready. Hello folks, welcome. I'm just gonna share my screen now. Uh, my name is Wesley Hoff. I'm an admissions counselor and also alum of Bennington College from the class of 2018. And I'm going to share a little bit about our college with you folks today. Um, so Bennington is a very special school. We're in southwestern Vermont, right in the corner of the state in New England. We're about a five minute drive from the New York state border and about a five minute drive to the Massachusetts state border. Um, so we're right in the corner of the state. Um, we're a very small school with about 700 students, just about over 700 students on campus and a student faculty ratio of about 10 to one. So you're really getting a small classroom experience here. Um, the average class size is between eight and 18 or 20 students. Um, a 20 student class is a big class at Bennington. Um, and all of our faculty are active in their fields, which means that they're all working on another project, whether that's a book that they're writing, a scholarly article that they're gonna submit to a journal, um, a play that they're working on, an album they're recording. So there's this nice sense that they're not just mentors, but peers and collaborators in your field. Um, two things that make Bennington really special are what we call our plan process and field work term. First, our plan process is our approach to the liberal arts. It's the way that we help students pick classes, and it's the way that we help students design their own unique major. So at Bennington, every student is, has their own unique major that they've built from various areas of study. As a freshman and throughout Bennington, there are no required courses. So you always have complete freedom of choosing which courses matter to you. And as I said, you'll have academic advisors that help you pick courses, but the idea is that you're the one driving the car of your education. You're not in the back seat. You always have control over which classes and why. Um, as a sophomore, you write a, um, a short essay called a plan, plan proposal, which um, talks about what you want to study, why you want to study these things, how you're going to study them. Um, and we place you with a team of faculty that represent your different areas of study. So for example, a student might meet with a media studies teacher, an anthropology teacher, and a filmmaking teacher. Um, let's say that those are their areas of study. This student could be studying something as specific as documentary filmmaking about refugee populations. So something so specific like that, um, you really typically see it like graduate schools, the, the college after college. But Bennington, we really like to um, put students in control over their, their major. Um, Bennington also finishes its four year experience with advanced work, a senior project that sort of pulls everything together. Um, so for one student that might be a concert that they put on, another student might be directing a play. Um, many students will write a critical thesis or a research thesis. Um, so you walk away from your four year experience with a product sort of under your belt that represents everything you've been doing. 
So I also mentioned that we do something called fieldwork term. So there are two semesters, a fall semester and a spring semester, but for six weeks in between in January and February, every student has to have an internship. Um, it could be a job, an internship, a shadowing position, a consultation position, as long as that work opportunity, uh, the content of it relates back to your major that you've created, um, you can really do anything. So, so sort of the sky's the limit at Bennington in terms of the, the way that you study different things and the way that you test those ideas out in the workplace. So you can sort of start chipping away at that, that postgraduate question of what do I do after I graduate? Well, you finish your four years with four experiences on your resume and a nice sense of, okay, maybe that would be um, a fulfilling career for me, or maybe that not so much. Um, another thing about Bennington before we wrap up as I rapidly approach my six minutes um, is that housing is very unique. You can see here in the middle of the image, there's all those white colonial houses. Those are each student houses. Um, instead of putting students together by year or gender or study, every student is placed in a house based on lifestyle and personality. Um, so students that like to make noise live together, the students that like to be quiet and spend all their time together get to live in the same house. Um, so the hope is that we drop you in a community within the larger Bennington community um, that immediately gives you a sense of belonging and really helps you feel at home from, from day one of orientation. Um, I think that I am almost at my six minutes, so I'm going to play it a little safe. Um, thank you all for, for listening, and please be sure to um, add any questions into the Q&A, and I'll be sure to share my contact information in the chat as well. Thank you all. Wesley, thanks so much to you and Bennington University. Um, audience, if you joined us a little late, um, don't forget you can put your questions in the Q&A at any time point, type out your question, and then of course note the college or university that you're directing your question to. You don't have to wait for a particular college or university to present in order to ask your question. Next up, I have the privilege of introducing to you Millican University. Derek, take it away whenever you're ready. Thanks, Courtney. Hi, everyone. There we go. Um, hi, everyone. Like Courtney said, my name is Derek Szynski. Um, I am a Millican admission counselor, and I'm also a proud alum of the class of 2014. Um, so I'm super excited to be here and share some more information about Millican with you. Um, first off, I want to let you know that Millican is located in Illinois. We are in Decatur. It's about two and a half to three hours south of the city, um, same distance from St. Louis and Indianapolis. And we're about 40 minutes to 60 minutes from Springfield, Champaign, and Bloomington, if you guys know where those are, right in the middle of the state. Um, we are a private four-year institution founded in 1901, and um, we are um, right in the middle of the town of Decatur, which has about 75,000 residents. Um, there's a lot of great stuff to do in the city as well outside of the campus community. There's lots of mom and pop shops, um, restaurants, uh, local businesses and things like that, an amazing parks and rec community, as well as a music and art scene, um, different partnerships and job and internship opportunities for students outside of our campus community as well. We are also the original home of the Chicago Bears if there's any um, football fans out there. So Millican at a glance, we are um, about 2,000 students strong. The majority of them are traditional um, students going into college. So like you guys, um, graduating high school and then going into college your freshman year. Um, we also have a pretty big transfer and um, um, international population as well. So if you don't end up studying abroad, you'll still get that experience of meeting people from different countries and experiencing those different cultures and things like that. Um, our student to faculty ratio is about 10 to 1. So you get a lot of great hands-on experience with your professors, um, working with your classmates as well, and um, getting that hands-on learning right from the beginning from freshman year. So we're going to put you in those classes that pertain, pertain to your major in your field um, right from the beginning. So you get that experience hands-on. Um, all students will receive a merit scholarship as well. So um, right off the bat, once you apply to Millican and you're admitted, you will receive a merit scholarship that ranges from $14 to $20,000. Um, and outside of that, we also have um, a rigorous honors program, presidential scholarship, Long Vandenberg Scholars, um, a fine arts program for students that um, for your talent award or your portfolio. And then there's other um, scholarships for students who might be exploratory studies or in the sciences and things like that. So we have a pretty competitive financial aid um, packaging system. 
We also have a 99.4% graduate success rate. So what that means is um, within six months of graduating, 99.4% of our students will receive um, a job placement or go on to another educational opportunity after graduation. So our um, majors are broken up into four different colleges and schools. Um, our, um, some of our more popular programs include the School of Nursing. Um, we have a direct admit program there. Um, anything within the College of Fine Arts, so fine arts related, musical theater, art, acting, uh, music education, audio engineering, those different kinds of things. The School of Education is pretty big. Um, our pre-professional programs as well, pre-med, pre-physical therapy, pre-dentistry, um, pre-law, and then um, our business school is also um, a pretty popular um, area for students. We also have an exploratory studies program. So if you are um, not sure what you wanna study, that is also an option for you where you'll get an advisor that's gonna help you um, kind of figure out what is the best route for you to take. And then they're also gonna make sure you're in your gen ed classes to make sure you graduate on time as well. So Canvas Life at Millican, um, we have tons of ways to get involved outside of your um, classwork, outside of jobs and things like that. We have 23 men's and women division three um, teams. We also have intramurals. Um, we have over hundred student organizations. So there's lots of stuff to choose from, ranging from academic uh, focus to career or programming boards, um, leadership, student government, fraternity sorority life, performing arts, special interests, it kind of runs the gamut. And you can also um, start your own organization as well. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, there's always something um, going on on campus and um, a part of campus life as well is our support services. So we have a lot of um, options through the Center for Academic and Professional Performance to help you outside of the classroom. So with tutoring or accommodations, um, uh, mock interviews, um, resume building, those different kinds of things, we're going to help you from freshman year on um, and post-graduation to help you um, land a job and keep that. Study abroad at Millican. Um, this is something that is a really awesome opportunity. I didn't get to do it as a student and I wish that I did, but um, learning about that um, in the beginning might help as well. So we have the option to study abroad for a whole semester or you can um, take a shorter trip, which is called an immersion over like spring or winter break. So if you don't wanna be away for that long, you can still get that experience of um, traveling abroad and earning credits towards your degree, um, being in a, different, in a different country and learning from those experiences in those different cultures as well. Um, how to apply, we are um, on the Common App and we also have an online application, millikin.edu slash apply. We are on a rolling admission basis as well. So that means if there's any seniors in the room, you can um, still apply. Um, juniors, if you are interested in Millikin, you can apply starting July 1st on our, our website and then August 1st on the Common App. We are um, gonna have a free application and will be test optional as well for fall 2022. So if you um, don't take the test or you don't wanna take the test, you don't wanna send your score, that's totally fine. Um, we're gonna look at your um, application, your transcript, the classes that you've taken, your activities, those different kinds of things, and then kind of evaluate your admission file based on that. Um, we also have um, in-person visits and virtual visits available too. So if you wanna come visit campus, you are uh, more than welcome to do that. And I'll put some more information in the chat on how to um, visit campus. Thanks everyone. Thanks so much, Derek, to you and Millican University. Audience, again, don't forget, you can put those questions in the chat or in the Q&A at any point. Um, next up, I have the privilege of introducing to you the University of Maryland. Robert, take it away whenever you're ready. Awesome, thanks so much and uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Robert M. Oliveri and I'm the Midwest Regional Recruitment Coordinator for the University of Maryland, meaning I'm based here in Chicago and I do handle all of the admissions recruitment efforts as well as the application review process for this area. So I'm very pleased to meet you all this evening and thank you so much for your time. Feel free to put questions in the Q&A once I jump off, I'll answer those. If you could put for University of Maryland, that would be very helpful so I know it's directed to me. Uh, as far as some basic statistics, if you've never seen us before, we have 30 plus or 30,000 plus undergraduate students and we have about additional 10,000 grad and professionals. So about 40,000 students on our campus. You probably have heard that we are a Big Ten member. So we are definitely a phenomenal, large, thriving university with over 800 student organizations. One of the things that sticks out about our university as well is that we have 43.6% of undergraduate students that identify as students of color. So our diversity on campus is phenomenal. And when you walk onto our campus, 
every single class that you walk in, everyone's going to look a little different and have a different background. And that's what we do to create innovation at our university, as well as add to your educational value. Consistently, we are ranked top 20 in innovation and best value university for a lot of reasons. But one of the major reasons is in our review process, we look for a diverse pool for our freshman class. Now, even outside of students who identify as students of color, there are some marginalized groups that we are popular amongst. Last year, we were ranked number one for best college for LGBTQ plus students, and we're always in the top 10 for Jewish student life. Now, talking a little bit about our location, we're in College Park, Maryland. So again, we're a Big Ten school. We're in a college town, College Park, Maryland. We are also only four miles outside of Washington, D.C. So you can take the green line, which is very similar to the L here in Chicago, right into D.C. and be, on, uh, be in D.C. within uh, 25 minutes. So from our campus to the White House is about 25 minutes. Now, not only is the location phenomenal, but it allows you to have a full-time course load and a full-time internship while you're at the campus. So it is just a phenomenal opportunity for anything you're really interested in. Washington, D.C. can be there for you. And it's not just looking at politics and government. All major industries have a governmental department related to it, as well as it has a thriving hospitality, sports, and museum atmosphere. So, so many different majors and programs benefit from this and allow 87% of our students to have an internship while they're on campus. These are all of our different colleges and programs. These are the large umbrella of the different programs that we offer. We do offer about 90 plus different majors. And as you can see, there's a lot of phenomenal options and we don't create a college unless we're gonna be good at it. So there is definitely specializations and uh, different things to be involved in within these colleges. These programs are limited enrollment, meaning that we have more students interested than we have seats available. So first you apply to the university, I will review your application. If I say yes, it goes over to the department. If they say yes, you get a direct entry. If they do not, there still is an opportunity to get in after your freshman year. You go through the gateway courses and these logistics and information is listed at lep.umd.edu. And it's very important to know you can get direct entry, but if you don't, you still have an opportunity to do that after your freshman year. Now, outside the classroom is just as valuable as inside the classroom. So we have over $500 million in research opportunities. Over 87% of our students uh, have at least one internship, 55% have two or more, and 22% study abroad, which is double the national average. So we really incorporate this, as well as our living learning floors and communities in our environment when you come on our campus outside the classroom. For our application, we're on both Common App and Coalition, so either way you can submit that. You fill out the basic information once and it goes to multiple schools. We will ask for an essay from the um, Common App or Coalition main piece, as well as an activities list or resume, but again, those go to multiple schools. We do require two letters of recommendation and official transcripts. If you're sending the test scores, we do require official standardized test scores from the testing agency. We will be optional for the next two cycles, so you can choose to send those test scores, but you don't have to. And with that being said, these are the different factors we look at take a quick picture of this or you can find it on our website but before you submit make sure that you're looking at all of these different things and list out everything that applies to you so we can give you the best read or review of our university it also does speak to our review process we are holistic so nothing completely rules you in nothing completely rules you out of being admitted to the university of maryland now the biggest thing to note if you don't remember anything else is our deadline which for early action is November 1st. It's non-binding and it's priority consideration for the best admissions decision, as well as it serves as your scholarship and honors program application. So it's all in one, just submit by November 1st, then you can sit back and relax and you'll get a decision from us by February 1st on your status of your admission. Again, there's my contact info, I'll put it in the chat. Feel free to use the Q&A to um, reach out to me. But again, I am your admissions counselor from the University of Maryland, Robert Oliveri, and have a great night. Robert, thanks so much to you and the University of Maryland. 
Guys, I told you this was going to be fun. Um, you've just heard from three great institutions, and we still have three to go. Next up, I have the privilege of introducing to you Villanova University. Take it away, Krista, whenever you're ready. Thanks so much, Courtney. Um, I will go ahead and start screen sharing. All right. Just a moment. All right, hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Krista Cantrell and I'm an Assistant Director of Admission at Villanova University. A little bit of background about us. Villanova is a medium-sized Catholic school that was founded in 1842 by the Order of St. Augustine as a school to educate Irish immigrants who at the time were outcast and ostracized from society. They didn't have access to public education, so the Augustinians held their doors open for this marginalized group of folks. Um, we're known for being a really tight-knit, inclusive kind of community that welcomes students from all religious beliefs and backgrounds. We have a saying here that Villanovans are the type of people who hold doors open for each other, both figuratively and literally, um, you know, starting back from our founding. We have about 6,700 undergraduate students and our suburban campus is located just 12 miles west of Philadelphia, which just so happens to be the fifth largest city in the country. Now, what you're looking at in front of you on the top left over there um, are the soaring twin spires on top of the St. Thomas of Villanova Church. Um, one thing to note about us is that we are rooted in our Augustinian principles. There are over 4,000 colleges and universities in the country, but there's only one Augustinian university and that's Villanova. Now, if you remember three things about us tonight, I hope that it is our three core values, which in Latin are veritas, unitas, and caritas. And translated to English, those mean truth, unity, and love. These three values really are universal to us as Villanovans, and it's what we hope to instill in each of our students during their four years here. Now, we take pride in a personalized education experience that offers close contact with your faculty um, and your advisors. We hope to grow minds, but also hearts. Our students are ambitious and engaged both inside and outside of the classroom. And as a top 55 university in the country, our academic offerings have both breadth and depth. Um, we offer, offer over 80 majors and minors, and they are each located in one of our four academic colleges or schools, which you can find um, on the bottom right over there. Um, we have our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, or CLASS, as we call it for short, the Villanova School of Business, our Fitzpatrick College of Nursing, and the College of Engineering. A couple fun facts about academics, Bloomberg Business ranked our business school as the number one business school in the country, and our student-produced social justice documentary, Sankofa, took home um, the Academy Awards, um, the Student Academy Awards, um, just last year, they took home the gold medal. We also happen to be one of the top producers of Fulbright Scholars in the country, so students here are really globally minded and prepared for success. Um, upon graduation, they enjoy excellent uh, career networking and positive outcomes, such as a 97% successful placement rate um, and an average starting salary, even in the midst of a pandemic um, of $63,000. Now to get to some of the fun stuff, student life, sports, service, social justice. Um, earlier I mentioned that students at NOVA are known as Villanovas, but in the sports world, we're also known as the Wildcats. That happens to be our mascot. You can see um, uh, Will Decat um, on the top right over there um, celebrating after a game. Uh, we are proud members of NOVA Nation. We have 21 national championships and three NCAA men's basketball championships one as recent as 2018. Um, the school spirit can really be felt here, both at the Finneran Pavilion, which is located right on campus where our students play, um, and also downtown at the Wells Fargo Center where the Philadelphia 76ers play. Um, but what I've really come to appreciate about Villanova is that the school spirit here really transcends in non-traditional ways. So it uh, transcends beyond sports into service as well. So that's really another hallmark um, of our education here. Our students understand that in order to ignite change, which is one of our mottos, that they really have to enact that change from the ground up. Here at NOVA, we're rooted in our foundational values, but also restless in that continuous aspiration to ignite change, um, which is why service and social justice is something that students really do take very seriously here. Um, every year, students perform over 250,000 hours of community service, and we also run the largest student-facilitated Special Olympics event in the world. Um, student engagement here is not just common, it's really ever-present. 
There's over 260 student clubs and organizations to participate in, and this is really the kind of place where everybody joins in and contributes to the good of the whole. They really understand that it's our collective community that ties our so social fabric together. I also like to call Villanova a school full of quote joiners, um, where students really do take pride in their involvement and their good natured spirit that's focused on self improvement, but also on giving back. Um, so whether that's through our Blue Key Society, Fraternity and Sorority Life, our Black Student Union, Acapella, our Bollywood Fusion Dance Team, LGBTQ, Women in Engineering, you name it, there really is a place for you here. Um, now, as I wrap things up, I want to bring it back to those three core values that I started with at the beginning, which is truth, unity, and love. There really is a culture of warmth and kindness on our campus that's paired with that Big East school spirit and a profound sense um, of commitment to service and social justice. So if you're interested in learning more, I'll drop my information into the chat so that you can reach out to me via email and we can connect. Um, but I you know, hope you learned a little bit about us and uh, hope to chat with you soon. Krista, thanks so much to you and Villanova University audience. Um, don't forget to put those questions in the Q&A, type them out, but also note the college or university that you're directing your questions to. Next up, I had the pleasure of introducing Georgetown University. Jenna, take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you so much. And I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay, perfect. Well, hello everyone. And thank you for being here with us this evening. My name is Jenna Myers and I'm one of the assistant directors of admission at Georgetown and work with applicants from Illinois. I'm actually a native Chicagoan myself. Um, but welcome to Washington, D.C. Georgetown was founded in 1789, which makes us the oldest Catholic and Jesuit institution within the United States. The university's founder, John Carroll, was the first Catholic bishop in the U.S. and came from a prominent family of early American patriots. Pluralistic from its beginnings, Georgetown was the first American university to be expressly open to students from all religious beliefs. And we maintain a commitment to this pluralism today, welcoming students from all 50 states and over 130 different countries to join three distinct communities that make up the Georgetown experience. Sorry. Uh, and then the first is the traditional residential campus, a compact 110 acres on which almost all of our undergraduates live and study. The campus community truly becomes a home for four years and a familiar place to return to well after graduation. Woven deep into the fabric of our community is the commitment to social justice, inner religious dialogue, and the belief that men and women should live their lives in service for others. In keeping with that ideal, students are often taking advantage of countless volunteer opportunities found within our Center for Social Justice. Now inside the classroom, students are really learning from some of the world's most influential figures. Our faculty are committed to teaching undergraduates and are truly leaders in their fields deeply involved in their academics or experienced practitioners, including former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, who teaches at the undergraduate and graduate levels. Georgetown's second community is the neighborhood immediately surrounding the campus, the historic neighborhood that is Georgetown. It's a charming area spanning about 12 blocks from the main gates and can be defined by its Sutterless style architecture, brick sidewalks, and cobblestone streets. The neighborhood is full of colorful townhouses that lead to M Street, which is really a staple of Washington's entertainment and nightlife. In addition to the charming neighborhood and vibrant campus community, the third community that Georgetown students join is the District of Washington, D.C. Now, given our proximity to the heart of the city, students easily take advantage of the vast laboratory that is D.C., including the Kennedy Center for Performing Arts, National Monuments, the Smithsonian Museum, Roosevelt Island, and three international airports. Not only is Washington the nation's capital and international political hub, but it is also a major cultural center with offerings to tempt any student and also visiting family member. Uh, now these three communities really give Georgetown students an ideal blend of campus life and city exposure. And living and studying in Washington, D.C. really provides Georgetown students with a front seat to history, whether it's heading downtown for a rally, witnessing democracy in action, or seeing a presidential inauguration for the first time, Georgetown students really take advantage of all that DC has to offer. Hoyas prepare themselves for life after graduation by putting their academic knowledge to practical use through a deep pool of inter internships and research opportunities in and around the city. Between interning on Capitol Hill, at businesses from startups to Fortune 500 companies, or at the National Institutes of Health, students can explore their diverse interests all year. And international experiences are also abundant and popular with our students. We have over 160 programs offered in 40 different countries that are direct matriculation. We also do have one program 
that is um, at our Georgetown owned villa, which is located just outside of Florence, Italy, featured on the top right of the screen. Now back on campus, the academic structure consists of four undergraduate colleges. Now all undergraduate students will apply to and enroll directly into the one of the four undergraduate schools seen on the slide. First you have Georgetown College. This is the uh, largest and oldest of the four undergraduate schools. We have the School of Nursing and Health Studies next. Uh, we have the Walsh School of Foreign Service, which is the largest foreign service school in the country and predates the US Foreign Service by about five years, founded in 1919. And finally, the McDonough School of Business, which at its core has a liberal arts education with a focus on the business fundamentals. Now, it should be mentioned that the School of Nursing and Health Studies is planning to become two schools in fall of 2022, pending accreditor approval. The two schools will be the School of Nursing and then the School of Health and they'll still encompass the four majors that currently exist. And these four undergraduate schools really act as academic homes for our students, but everyone comes together as one Georgetown community. It's important to note that no walls exist between the four schools and our admissions rates are very similar between them. Our supplement will ask students to respond to an essay prompt based on the school that you're applying into. And we understand some students are still unsure of their academic plans. We really encourage such students to consider applying to a school that backs uh, best matches their current interests, or of course you can apply undecided to Georgetown College. Again, that's the, the largest of the schools. And Georgetown does use its own application, meaning we are not on the Common App or the Coalition, and our application is gonna go up on June 1st. Um, students will be able to submit their application, which takes about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, and then their supplement that'll have your extracurriculars, your essays. Uh, that plus your other supporting documents will need to be submitted by one of our two deadlines, November 1st for early action, which is a non-binding program, or January 10th, which is for regular decision. But we do have a holistic review process and we'll always review the applicant within the context of your own high school and your own circumstances. And regardless of major, every student at Georgetown will enjoy the benefits of small classes, excellent academic advising, and committed faculty members. We have an 11 to 1 student-faculty uh, student faculty ratio, and average class size is usually about 26 students. Um, and a running thread throughout the history of academic excellence is a commitment to our values, the core um, values of the entire university really our Jesuit identity, which those principles are being men and women in service for others and cure personalis, care for the entire person. Those are really two central themes for the institution. Uh, I do see I'm at the six minute mark. I'll put my contact information into the chat. So if anyone has any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, but thank you so much. Jenna, thanks so much. That six minutes goes so fast. Um, this is a last call to anyone who has questions. Make sure you put those in the Q&A so that our panelists can answer them as they have time. I know that they're furiously trying to answer what they can now. Um, so our final presentation tonight will be from the George Washington University. Luke, take it away whenever you're ready. Thanks so much, Courtney. Good evening, everyone. My name is Luke Britt, and I am and then one of the assistant directors in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at the George Washington University. I believe I've gotten my screen share going yep. perfect. All right. Um, so just to tell you a little bit about GW in the next few minutes. Um, so we are one of the seven undergraduate schools, and, uh, colleges and universities located in the nation's capital. We are located right in the heart of downtown Washington. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But first, some Kind of understanding and context of who we are as an institution. We were founded in 1821, so 200 years ago this year. We were, and that our university was created by an act of the United States Congress to fulfill the vision that President Washington had for a university in the nation's capital to prepare future generations leaders. Um, we have grown over the past two centuries to just over 11,000 students coming from all across the United States and over 130 countries around the world. Um, even with that size, we are considered a medium-sized university. We are research-focused in our mission. So part of our, our mission in, in our charge is to create those new leaders, to prepare leaders of future generations, but also to ask tough questions and seek out answers to unexplored or, or explore further into topics that will enable you to make leadership in fields, whether that's in public life, it's in scientific research, it's in your community organizing, or any other field that you feel 
is appropriate. We have two campuses in Washington, D.C. We are best known for our Foggy Bottom campus, which is located in the heart of downtown Washington, as you can see from this map. We're within walking distance of the Lincoln Memorial and the other monuments on the National Mall, as you saw on the, from my first slide with those students, and they are living just about three blocks from there in Thurston Residence Hall. And you'll also find that we are surrounded by many other notable organizations, including the John F. Kennedy Center, which you heard about just a few moments ago from my colleague at Georgetown, but also we're you know, right on campus is the Pan American Health Organization, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank are located immediately next to campus, and we are five blocks from the White House when you're standing in the center of Foggy Bottom. So literally the institutions that many students, you know, come to, to be engaged with during their studies, that visitors come to the city of Washington to see are on our doorstep. Um, Foggy Bottom is an urban campus. It occupies over 20 square blocks of downtown real estate. And within that is all GW from classroom buildings to dormitories and residence halls, our student center, our gym and athletic facilities even though it looks very much blended into the rest of the city, you definitely get the feel of being on a college campus. But if you also want to be in a space that physically looks like a college campus, like you've seen on television or in the movies or other forms of popular media, you can absolutely get that at GW as well, because just three miles west of Foggy Bottom on the other side of Georgetown University is the Mount Vernon campus. It is a smaller, about 65 acre campus 25 acres, excuse me, I misread that. Um, and it has, you know, a number of first year residence halls, about a third of our class lives over on the Mount Vernon campus. Many of those students are participating in some of our, some of our special living and learning communities like the University Honors Program, the Women's Leadership Program, or our Politics and Values cohort. There are also a fully functioning classroom buildings, library over there, one of the five university libraries is located on the Mount Vernon campus. And you can go back and forth between Foggy Bottom and Mount Vernon for classes, for student organizations, or anything else you're doing throughout your day, thanks to the Mount Vernon Express, or the VEX as we refer to it, which runs 24 hours a day. And it's incredibly easy to get through um, between Mount Vernon and Foggy Bottom as you see fit. GW is organized into seven undergraduate schools and colleges offering three different bachelor's degrees the Bachelor of Arts, the Bachelor of Science, and the Bachelors of Fine Arts. And you will apply directly to one of these seven schools when you apply to GW. You're not admitted to a particular campus. You're admitted into the school that most closely matches what your academic interests are at the time that you apply. And then in your second year, you will select one of or more than one of this is more than 75 majors that we offer. We also offer over 100 different minors, and in total, we offer about 2,000 distinct academic courses for undergraduate students every year. So there's plenty of room to mix and match and build a set of classes every year that is going to be the most beneficial for your time at GW. And if you begin in one school and you want to double major across schools, that is entirely possible. It is also possible to begin in one school and transition out of that school and into an entirely to a different school all while being within GW, you work with your academic advisor to do that. So it's a very you know, easy process to navigate for students who are using their first year and a half to really kind of navigate and find what they're interested in studying. Now, in addition to you know, the many, many academic opportunities, there are over 500 different clubs and organizations for students to get involved with their community and their peers outside of the classroom from religious organizations to LGBTQIA plus organizations, politics, debating society, recreational sports, over 13 different acapella choirs are currently operating at GW. Even in COVID times, there's plenty to do. There's also, we encourage you to utilize the city of Washington for research, for internships, using that city laboratory to really connect with the resources that you may be involved with far beyond your time at GW can begin while you're a student through the connections with our Career Services Center and our faculty. Application is begins open August 1. We're a regular decision and an ED2 um, school with both ED1 and ED2 rounds, which you can see the deadlines are either November 1st or January 5th. If you have any questions, please send those to me through the Q&A. 
Luke, thanks so much to you and the George Washington University. We really appreciate it. Now I would love to invite all of the panelists to turn back on their cameras and share just a little bit more about their institution. So um, we'll go round robin in the order that you presented originally. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Or if you'd rather, feel free to give a fun fact or an interesting fact. So up first, Bennington University. Hello, yeah. Um, I think my, my favorite uh, tradition and event is a um, every semester during finals week, um, you know, that point where everybody is trying to do their work and everybody is staying up late. Um, our faculty and staff get together um, at midnight on a random night in our final week and we'll serve breakfast to every student um, and there's live music um, sort of entertainment uh, so it's this secret event that you don't know what night it's going to happen until you hear somebody ringing a bell and then you can go get served by uh, that faculty who you're you know staying up all night to finish an essay for the next day um, but that's a really fun night and a nice sort of stress relief and community moment for Bennington every uh, every semester. Hi, um, I was thinking about mine and I keep thinking about food, so I'm going to share this one. Um, it's um, called the cookie party and it happens right before um, finals, um, the first semester in the fall, so right before winter break and Christmas break. Um, it was a tradition that was started before, um, sorry, it was started by um, the wives of some of the faculty and staff in 1912, so it's over 100 years old. Um, and everybody bakes a bunch of cookies, professors, um, faculty, staff, um, students, and brings them in. And it's just kind of a fun way to unwind before um, everybody leaves for um, winter break and before finals. Um, so to beat the stress of finals, we eat a bunch of cookies. Um, but yeah, that's one of my favorite traditions. Awesome. For the University of Maryland, we'll stay on the food train in a slight way. Um, so we have our Testudo statue, which is our mascot. And there's about six around campus, but the main one is in front of our library, right on the main academic mall. And you rub their nose for good luck. But right before finals, the students go and give Testudo offerings. And the larger the offering, the more help you need in your finals. So food is traditionally about the average one. Um, I've seen a plasma screen TV there before though. So that's to need a lot of help for their final. And we actually did research and data uh, one year that Testudo was blocked. So you could not give her her offerings. So our finals percentage went down one full percent. So now it's written in Maryland law that you have to have a path to Testudo at all times. So um, at Villanova, food's a big thing for us too. Um, we have food trucks out at the Oreo, which is like the main statue kind of central part of campus on the reg, especially with um, COVID. Uh, every undergraduate student had their own lawn chair that they were given at the beginning of the year. So they'd kind of plop down on the lawn. And I think there were food trucks out there weekly. But in terms of like an actual yearly tradition that we have, we have something called the St. Thomas of Villanova Day, which is like a prime example of putting ideals into action. So every year about 5,000 Villanovans go out into the greater uh, Philadelphia community to perform service. So it's just kind of a really great way to express solidarity in that sense. So that's, that's my favorite. Uh, I'd say my favorite kind of a toss up one is uh, we have our Georgetown seal outside of the building Healy Hall and the tradition is that you are not allowed to step on the seal itself. Uh, if you are a current student, um, you, the tradition is that you won't graduate. If you are a prospective student, you won't get admitted. Not entirely sure what it is for staff and faculty, but thankfully I have not stepped on it. But it's always really fun uh, when students are walking outside of Healy, they'll actively stop in their tracks and kind of walk around the seal. So the bricks all around the seal usually get replaced every couple of years, but the seal is in just pristine condition. And I'd say the other one is just, you know, students will always walk um, or go down to the National Mall and watch the sun setting on the city. It's one of my favorite aspects of living in DC, uh, but that's definitely something, a tradition that our students do as well. And I would, kind of echo sort of the engagement in the city. Um, one of my favorite traditions is our welcome day of service every year. So that is led by President LeBlanc, the deans of the undergraduate schools and colleges. And it is 
primarily targeted at our first year students, but every year we see returning students who may come back to campus early or maybe resident advisors who are already on campus who are going out across the city of Washington and are getting involved in service through the community, whether that's going to a city or a park, which oftentimes means working with the National Park Service because most of our city parks are federal land or going to a local food kitchen or you know the, the public library to engage in giving back to the city where students come to DC to get so much on their own, whether it's through internships or other engagement, but recognizing the value of the city of Washington and ways that we can continue to contribute and support that city as a community within Washington, DC. I always love hearing all these awesome traditions and fun facts, and I know the audience is excited to make one of them their new tradition as they um, embark on the college search and enrollment process over the next year. Um, audience, I hope that you take a great look at these incredible professionals on your screen. Um, they are really here to help you and shepherd you through this process. I hope that you'll take it up on their offer to ask them questions. Um, should those come up and, and don't rely on someone's brother, sister's cousin to provide you with that expert advice. Go to the people like them at all the colleges and universities that you're looking at. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. As you close out, there'll be a quick four question survey. So we hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. Sign up for more sessions. I told you this was a really fun way to learn about multiple schools um, in a short amount of time and there's still one more hour left. Um, also, if you have questions, you can meet with your school counselors and ask questions in the, the counselor corner. Um, you should have gotten a link to that along with this um, link to join this meeting. So they are available tonight. And this was recorded and will be available within one week at strivescan.com slash Ignatius. Um, best wishes with your college search, everyone. Bye-bye.